Hundreds of years ago, people shared stories about the darkness of the ocean depths and mysterious creatures hiding down there. Sit down, get comfy, and let me tell you one of those stories. It's about women with beautiful moon faces that live in the ocean, and they're half fish. Legends say mermaids have existed for thousands of years. One of the first myths talks about a Syrian deity who jumped into a lake and then turned into a fish. But she was so amazingly beautiful that the upper part of her body couldn't change. So only her lower part transformed. After that, mermaid stories spread across different cultures. Even some famous explorers said they saw these magnificent creatures, like Christopher Columbus on his expedition near Haiti in 1493. He said they weren't as beautiful as everyone thought. Another explorer, Captain John Smith, saw a mermaid too, over a hundred years after Columbus. But in his stories, she was a stunning creature with fascinating green hair and big eyes. It happened off the coast of Newfoundland. She was swimming around with all possible grace, Smith later described. Her nose was somewhat short and she had long ears. The captain thought he had fallen in love with her until, at one point, he realized she wasn't human, but a fish from the waist down. Experts today believe many of these explorers who thought they had seen mermaids actually spotted human-sized marine mammals, such as dugongs and manatees. These animals potentially inspired all these legends about mysterious half-human, half-fish creatures. They don't look like mermaids at first, of course, but if you're watching them from quite a distance away, plus most of their body is submerged in water and covered with restless waves, or if it's dark outside, yep, you might get easily confused. Especially back then, when people didn't have any information about the animal world like we do today. Some claim mermaids really do exist because they saw a documentary about them. Well, people do make fictional media called docudrama, where they talk about fascinating, but not necessarily real creatures. But it would be impossible for mermaids to really exist in the way we imagine them. First, it would be too cold. Even if you're half fish, the other half is still human. And the human body is not designed to survive in the water for a long time. The ocean is just not our home, just a place where we sometimes swim, dive, and do other fun things. But we also get out of the water after a while. Of course, some areas of the ocean heat up to over 70 degrees Fahrenheit, but only at the surface. And who could stay in there all the time? Mermaids would probably want to decorate their home somewhere at the bottom of the ocean. There, they'd have more space, and they wouldn't have to worry about colliding with ships whales, or anything else while, for example, taking an afternoon nap. But it's too cold down there. If mermaids wanted to withstand such conditions, they would have two options. Either have a lot of fat or be really hairy. In the first case, they would probably look like some marine mammals with a thick blubber layer that would protect them from cold water. That means their arms wouldn't be so long and slender. It'd be too cold for that. Marine mammals have a specific body shape called fusiform. That's why their bodies are so thick, and they don't have necks and limbs as we do. Their appendages are short, so they can survive reduced heat and blood flow. As for the second option, they'd have a thick coat as thermoregulation, like the sea otter. But otters have to groom themselves all the time so that their hair is filled not with water, but with air. And that's hard to do all the time if you live in the ocean depths. Plus, you can't actually choose just some body parts. Mammals, which include humans, are warm-blooded and have hair. Fish don't. So you can't have characteristics of both, since we go in completely different directions. I mean, we do have a sea creature in our family tree. It was a very small, wrinkled sack with a quite large mouth. You have to admit, our distant cousin looked really funny. It was as big as a grain of sand, and scientists found its fossil remains in China. Although, I never expected you could actually find fossils of something that tiny. Anyway, this fella tells us we do have something in common with sea creatures, or at least we did until we parted ways. But it was 540 million years ago. Mermaids would probably have gone extinct by now. Fish and humans have different ways of reproducing. For instance, most fish lay eggs. And the only mammals that do that are platypuses and echidnas and there's no part of their body that looks human or fish, so they'd make a really poor excuse for a mermaid. 
Plus, mermaids would be constipated all the time. No need to explain this further. And the final reason mermaids can't be real, there's no physical evidence. The world would be obsessed with studying such species. In 1960, British biologist Sir Alistair Hardy had some thoughts about anomalies in human evolution, which included mermaids too. After all, humans don't have fur as many land mammals do. Plus, our brains are relatively big considering our body size. The brains of marine mammals, like dolphins or toothed whales, are significantly bigger and more developed than those of non-human primates. So, Hardy thought humans might not be relatives of savanna-dwelling apes. His theory was that maybe we were more related to some creatures from marine environments. Hardy and the supporters of his ideas believed that humans could have gone in the direction of the ocean to get food, instead of looking for it on dry land. We still don't have enough evidence, but I love legends about mermaids. Hundreds of years ago, people who lived in coastal towns and sailors across the globe told stories of these sea maidens. An interesting one dates back to the 17th century. It says there was a mermaid who entered Holland through a dike. She got injured while doing that. People quickly took her to a nearby lake to help her. She healed pretty soon. With time, she got used to living on dry land so much that she performed things like household chores, learned to speak Dutch, and generally became a respected member of their society. You don't get many mermaid reports in modern times, but something interesting happened in 2009. Some people say they had seen a mermaid in Karat Yam, a town off the coast of Israel. A group of friends was on the beach when they suddenly saw a person lying on the sand. They thought it was just someone sunbathing and enjoying the waves, but then they noticed a person was lying in a weird position. They decided to come closer, but a person quickly jumped away and disappeared into the water. They were shocked to see that the creature had a tail. There are stories about mermen too, like in Scotland, where they summoned storms and sank entire ships. There was one group called the Blue Men of the Minch. Many sailors were afraid of them. This group was said to live in the Outer Hebrides off the coast of Scotland. From the waist up, they were like ordinary men, except for their blue skin and grey beards. Local stories say that before they went after a ship, the Blue Men challenged the captain to a rhyming contest. So, if the captain was fast, smart, and good enough with rhymes, he could save his sailors from these dangerous creatures. In Japanese legends, you'll hear a lot about creatures they call kappa. These creatures are said to inhabit coasts, lakes, and rivers. These water spirits look more like animals than humans. They have tortoise shells on their backs and simian faces. Similar to the blue men, these fellas also like to interact with humans from time to time and challenge them to some games of skill, where you better not lose.